hi everyone welcome to my youtube channel i hope you all are doing extremely well so today in this video we are going to solve problem of the day on the geeks for geeks platform so today's problem is counting elements in two arrays right so first of all we'll be understanding the problem statement and then we'll be having a discussion regarding the logic part and then we'll be proceeding to the coding part right so before proceeding further to the video and having uh, have an understanding about the same make sure to subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed the channel till now it will really motivate me to create more such content for you more such videos for you and make sure to join our telegram community as well so that you can stay updated with all the job opportunities and the videos that we are putting on our youtube channel you can follow me on other platform as well the link is there in the description so with that note let's get started with the first problem okay so that's the only problem that we have to discuss so the problem says given two unsorted arrays err1 and err2 they may contain duplicates for each element in err1 count elements less than or equal to it in err2 so what the problem statement means that we are having two arrays as you can see right now right so uh, also there is a possibility of containing duplicates uh, in both the in both these arrays now what we have to do is for each element that we do have in arr1 uh, in this array right so what we have to do is we have to count the elements which are equal to for each element right which are equal to or less than that you can see less than or equal to it in arr2 for example here if you will see so the size of both the arrays has been mentioned m equal to 6 like it is going to be uh, so it would be different right it's not important that the size of both the arrays would be same so here you can see m is 5 and n is 7 okay so we have here m equal to 6 n equal to 6 now if you will see the first element that we do have in error 1 that is 1 so if you will count the number of elements which are less than or equal to 1 in err2 so what are those you can see 0 1 and these two one right so overall four elements are there right now for element this element right for number two so you can see one two three four five five elements are less than or equal to two for three if you will see so how many elements are less than or equal to three how many elements are there so you can see this these many elements are less than or equal to three that is five only now for four if you have to check for four if you have to check so all these elements will come for seven again all these elements will come and for nine also right so we are having the output as four five five six 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 okay so number of elements less than or equal to one two three four seven and nine in the secondary are so that's what they have mentioned so i believe the problem statement should be clear to you till now if you are thinking about the brute force approach for this problem although the problem is, is easy only the first uh, thought i believe that must be there in your mind that what we can do is so we can take one loop right basically we'll take two loops so in in the outer loop what we can do is we can take a an element of arr1 one by one let's say first one then two then three then four then seven then nine like that and now in this one we'll take and we'll compare this one with all the values that we do have in arr2 and we'll simply count if that value is less than or equal to one so uh, we will be maintaining a variable count basically and accordingly we'll be adding this to some uh, array list for example here we do have array list so we'll be adding that count value that we do have corresponding to one in an array list then we'll be having two then again for two we'll be again going through all these elements in arr2 and we'll be doing the comparison then for three also we'll be doing the same thing now if i am asking you about the time complexity for this particular problem so if you will see what we are doing is for each right first of all we'll be having the outer loop uh, that would be uh, let's say int i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus right if uh, n is the size of arr1 and in a loop again that would be int j equal to zero because from the starting itself from all the elements we are doing uh, the comparison for each element that we do have in arr1 so j equal to zero j less than m m let's say is the size of arr2 okay so j less than m uh, j plus plus and again some logic would be there inside the inner loop right so what would be the time to, uh, what would be the time complexity the time complexity is going to be m into n right so can we further optimize it or like if you will scroll here further so what we are expected to do is like okay so we have to complete this function uh, that takes two array 
m uh, ar1 ar2 size m and n as input and returns an array containing the result or uh, required results the count of element less than or equal to it in arr2 for each element in arr1 okay so that's what it is now uh, expected time complexity that they have asked for is big of n plus n into log n big of 1 now something must be ringing like something must be there in your mind now by having a look on the time complexity like what further optimization we can do binary search but again one thing would be there okay binary search we can apply on the sorted array so let's sort it right uh, what's so big deal in that so what we can do is this arr2 right so what we'll be doing is we'll be sorting it right we'll be sorting it so let's understand the logic that we're going to implement um using binary search and further optimization that we can do so let's say we are having this array elements right for arr1 and arr2 the size of both the arrays is six only right m and n values are six now as i mentioned that first of all we are going to sort the elements of arr2 because we are going to implement binary search for this array and for binary search the thing is that uh, our array needs to be sorted so after sorting this will be the array this will be the arr2 that would be formed right so now as mentioned so what we're going to do is for each element in arr1 we are going to implement the binary search on it right because what we need to find we need to find the element which is less than or equal to one let's say for now we're talking about one so elements less than or equal to one so if you are aware of the binary search algorithm so let me mention even so basically we do maintain two pointers low as well as high so low value will be zero initially and high value would be equal to the size of array to minus one so what is the size of arr2 that is six minus one that is five so low value is zero and high value is five so while low is less than equal to high we are going to find the middle value right so how we're going to calculate mid that would be equal to low plus high divided by two so low value is zero high value is five zero plus five divided by two we'll be having what two so mid value is two now what we need to check so in a r r2 right for now let me write a only so in a of if a of mid just think about it if the element that we do have this index at a of mid if it is less than or equal to less than or equal to the element that we are looking for what is that element one so if the value is less than or equal to one what will you shift you will shift the value of low or high just think about it see if the value is less than or equal to the value or at a of mid the value is less than or equal to the value that we are looking for then if it is lesser then obviously we need to move in the right side and even if it is equal there can be a possibility that further also we do have in the right side we do have some more values which are equal to the potential value to the a particular value that we are looking for right so that's why we'll update the value of low as what low as mid plus one okay and if that is not the case right if the value at a of mid is greater than that of the element that we are looking for then obviously we need to search we need to look in the left direction so in that case we'll be updating the value of high as mid minus one right so that's what the code for binary search so let me iterate you through this and let me make you understand how this is going to help us so for now the first element that we do have is one right so mid value is going to be so l would be a zero high would be low will be zero and high would be five so zero plus five divided by two we will be having two so mid values two so at a of mid what is the value at a of mid one one less than equal to one because the element that as of now we are targeting is one so one less than equal to one yes it is so we are updating the value of we are updating the value of low as mid plus one so value would be three right now uh, we'll be checking this condition so three less than equal to five the condition is true we'll be calculating the mid again so three plus five eight divided by two mid value is going to be four now so at a of four what is the value at a of four two two less than equal to one no right so we are going to update the value of high high uh, we are going to update as mid minus one so what is the value of mid four four minus one will be having three so high high value would be what three now three less than equal to three the condition is true 
again we'll calculate the mid so mid is going to be what 3 plus 3 6 divided by 2 3 so mid is going to be 3 so at a of 3 what is the value at a of 3 what is the value 1 right okay yeah that's that's one only so one less than equal to one the condition is true so we are going to update the value of low as mid plus one what is the value of mid three three plus one four right so now again if you will go through right you will check this condition low less than equal to high that won't be true right because low value is four we'll come out of the loop now if you will see that in case of low right so all these values before index four they all are less than or equal to one just just observe it carefully right so this is what the count that we were looking for right the count of the elements which are less than or equal to four sorry which are less than or equal to one right this that's what the count that we are looking for so what we can do is we can simply return the value of low that is four for the case of one that's how you can check for other elements as well like for if you will check for two so you will get five is the answer so that's the complete flow is that's the complete logic is so i hope that you must be able to understand how this is working so now we can have a look on the code part right so here's our code for the logic that we just discussed so uh, we need to return an array list so that's what we are having here answer and we are sorting the elements for arr2 now for int i equal to 0 i less than m i plus plus so in this array list we are simply adding the count for each value that we do have in ar1 right so we are calling this function bindy search right so um, bindy search uh, we are having these three values right we are having the element that we for which we need to determine that count right and this arr2 and the size of arr2 right so that's the logic that we discussed right now that's the binary search implementation so yeah that's all from my side so i hope that you must be able to understand the problem statement logic part and the coding part as well right so if the uh, flow is clear if the logic is clear then you can implement this in any language that you are comfortable with i have provided the code even in the description so in case you want to refer that and yeah that's all thank you so much for watching don't forget to share and subscribe my channel bye bye